Have you ever wondered if there are common traits or mindsets that all the successful people in the music industry seem to have? After interviewing over 250 industry professionals, we've uncovered the top 10 mindsets that you need to set yourself apart in this crazy business. What's up, y'all? I'm Travis Ferentz from Progression Success in the Music Industry. I'm a Grammy-nominated recording engineer and mixer, and I have started this channel to help music industry professionals like yourself build the career that you've always wanted. And today for this video, I'm joined by a guest, so welcome music producer, podcaster and recording engineer Ben Wallach from Secret Sonics. Hey, Travis. How are you? I am excellent, man. I'm looking forward to this video today. So yeah, same here. I want to make this a bit different than your usual top 10 videos. So both Ben and I have come up with our top five mindsets individually, and we're going to hear them from each other for the first time while we're filming. So should be fun. And just in case we've ended up with a duplicate, I've got a bonus that I'll drop in at the end regardless. So make sure you stick around for that. What do you think, Ben? You want to give it a shot? Absolutely. So I think one of the top mindsets that you can bring to your career is being willing to invest in yourself and to become a lifelong learner. This is something that I've seen in pretty much all of my guests. They've all mastered the fundamentals of their craft and they know that there's no shortcut or cheat code or software that you can buy that will change your career. Basically, your skills are the foundation of your career and you need to invest in building them. What do you think? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. I can't think of a specific, you know, interview that I did, but it's so true, you know? And if you're not continuously getting better, and honestly, it's like one of the, the biggest traits I've seen of everybody I've interviewed is like, you know, they're always striving to get better, always striving to be a lifetime learner. And it's something that, that I've seen across mostly music producers on my show or mixing engineers, like just always wanting to get better, you know? Totally. I couldn't agree more. I think uh, I, I remember interviewing Matt Huber. He mentioned that he felt like he had all these plugins and he didn't know like what anything did really. And so he just stopped using everything. He just went back to like the stock basic shit and just mastered understanding what he was doing. And I think that's like really the root. And I, you know, look at you and I have both started podcasts. We've learned a bunch of new stuff. Now I have a YouTube channel. I just enjoy learning new stuff. So I think um, it's a trait that you need for success in this business. Yeah. Uh, so what do you got as your first one? So my first rule is, I guess it's in the similar category, but it's, it's persistence and staying in the game. We all know that the people that are working in the bus music business today are only working in the music business because they're still working in the music business and they didn't quit. People that quit are no longer here. So the, <laughs> the secret to working in the music business is to not stop working in the music business. So the people that stay in the game long enough, eventually those who persist succeed. So that's my, that's my first rule. Completely agree. I definitely, I've said this so many times. Uh, it's, it's like last person standing at this point. You know, it's like, you just have to remember that you're not going to get successful as fast as you think it's going to take way longer like people look around and they see these what seems like overnight success but they don't see all the work that goes into that so it's just you cannot quit you've got to be persistent i love that one so despite the fact that i just said skills are the foundation of your career my second one is you've got to be an advocate for yourself because being the best is not good enough nobody's going to see how talented you are and just like pluck you up and change your life You'll get opportunities because you're amazing, but in the long run, you're going to have to find a way to put yourself in positions and convince people that they want to work with you, regardless of whether you're the best guitarist in the world or the 100th best guitarist in the world. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think there's like a confidence thing that you only get when you put in the reps and you put enough time in and you put that work in. And then once you've developed that, those skills and you have the confidence you could really sell yourself and it's you, you, it's easy to like prove to people your value you know totally agree and and you know you mentioned in there just like putting the reps in to the point where it's like uh you know second nature and it's like once you hit that flow state you can really perform your best and you know build trust with everybody so absolutely what's your next one so my 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 next rule was building and nurturing relationships nobody is you know going to be in their man slash woman cave forever you're not actually going to have any success if you do that. You're not going to meet anybody. Nobody's going to know who you are. Nobody's going to care about the work you're doing. You have to actually go out there, meet people, and actually nurture those relationships. And like, you know, like I met you through the podcast and and now we've actually nurtured our friendship. And like, that's, that's, that's what you have to do. Find people that are like-minded and meet them. And, you know, I've mentioned this so many times on my podcast, how like the first time I went to AES, I just realized that there's other people that are very similar to me, doing similar things to me, and they're cool and we could just hang. And that sense of community is super important. Yes, networking comes up on basically every episode. Like the one that just came out the other day with the guitarist Adam Tressler, 
he talks about how all basically all of his opportunities on tour and in the studio have come from relationships. And I think about like going all the way back to, I think it was episode five for me was um, Shoshana Bean. Mm -hmm. And she's a Broadway singer in, in New York, just amazingly talented. But she mentioned that networking to her is finding a community of like-minded people that you enjoy working with. It's not like going to the mixer events and like passing out your card. And I think that's the important thing that people sometimes forget about networking is that it doesn't have to be that like slimy business card bullshit. It's significantly better if it's authentic and it's real and it's people that you want to hang out with. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. I love that one. Yeah. Amazing. So what's your next rule, Travis? So if there's one that I'm pretty sure we're going to overlap on, I think it's going to be this one. <laughs> so, uh, but my third one is noticing and avoiding perfectionism. You've got to keep that in mind. I just recently had a guest, Ebony Smith, who summed it up really well. She said, strive for pristine, not perfect. And it reminds me of another quote uh, from, I think it was producer Damien Taylor, who's, who's been on my show twice. And he said, done is better than perfect. And I think as creatives, we just have to remember that we can get super lost in that last like 2%. And the difference between knowing when something is great and ready to ship out is super important if you want to keep, you know, driving forward. Because let's be honest, if you never finish anything, if you never finish any music, you're never going to have a career. You've got to be done with something eventually, and you've got to ship it out. I couldn't agree with you more. And I love that quote on Ebony's episode on your podcast. Pristine is better than perfect, or we're aiming for pristine, not perfect. It was so good. And I totally resonated when I heard that. And I was like driving and I, and I heard that. And I was like, yes, Ebony. And she's awesome. She actually had a great episode on my, on my podcast as well. Um, yeah. And I actually didn't somehow, <laughs> that's not one of my, uh, that's not one of my uh, rules that I wrote down. Not that I disagree with you, but perfectionism is, I think, uh, it's something that I've struggled with so much. And I've talked about this a lot, maybe ad nauseum, of uh, it just prevents you from actually doing stuff. And you have to get over that. And I remember talking with, um, I asked, uh, maybe you asked this question. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I had a, a conversation with Andrew Mari and Jesse Ray Ernster. And the question was, how do you get over perfectionism? And they both you know, said, you got to just put in the reps and, and do it, you know, and the more you do it and more you ship, the more you realize that, you know, I guess done is better than perfect or it, it, they didn't say it quite like that, but that was basically the idea. Once you're getting comfortable releasing stuff and being finished with it, then you kind of, that perfectionism thing starts to, to go down there's, or there's less of that in your built in, into your psyche. Oh yeah. You know, I like to use the example of the podcast and I don't, you might feel this way as well. I feel like launching my podcast and getting comfortable with putting something out into the world every week, it actually made me a better mixer because it made me more confident in my decisions. Like that's the thing I've done for almost 20 years. And so if I can put these podcast episodes out and feel confident about it, it like doubled down my confidence in, in the thing that I do the most. And there's just so, it's just so energizing when you put things out in the world, even if you know they're not perfect. Like maybe it could have been a little bit better. Just get it out there. It's still going to resonate with some people. Yeah, I, I, I would just, I would, I would totally agree with you on that point also in terms of like shipping podcasts. And I also do some work on other podcasts. And because the rate is so fast, the turnaround time is so quick, you don't have time to really be a total perfectionist. And it's just, it, it totally has flexed that muscle also in music production and mixing as well. And, I, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm less of a perfectionist when it comes to mixing and, uh, and production as well now. All right, so what do you have for your next one? So my next one is humility. And uh, humility meaning that we have to be able to accept constructive feedback and constructive criticism uh, because it takes time to get really good at our craft. And I think a lot of people fail at the beginning because their egos are too big and they can't accept that constructive feedback that they actually need to improve their craft. Honestly, being in a, in a band <laughs> helped check my ego. You know, I had to learn those lessons the hard way back as a musician. And then, so that's something that I've kind of been intuitively able to do as a music producer and mixing engineer. But if, if you're too, if you're too haughty, you're never going to improve enough. And so, I mean, it kind of goes back to the lifelong learning thing as well, but you have to be willing to accept and hear that constructive criticism from other people, because it will make you better. You know, as long, you know, hopefully they're not being rude and they're not being a jackass to you, but yeah, you have to be able to listen to those things and hopefully you'll become a better, you know, engineer, music producer, whatever, because of that. 100%. I think uh, 
it, ego stops so many people. I think early in your career, you kind of let your ego get the best of you because you're still kind of, you're finding your own voice and your own confidence. But I think later you realize that when people are giving you criticism, that they're not attacking you. You have to remember that for a lot of us behind the scenes people, we're working on somebody else's art and we're there to like capture their vision. And I think when you're, when you're coming up early, you, you get caught up in what you want to do and later, you know, your ego gets out of the way. But I think that's, that's a huge one. Everybody needs that one. I love it. Awesome. So Travis, tell me what's your fourth rule. So this one's very, this one's very progressions. Um, it's uh, you've got to hold yourself accountable and maintain your integrity. And this is something that I've seen pretty much all the people that I've interviewed. You've got to be willing to admit when you've made a mistake that you aren't the best for the job. You've got to deliver on your deadlines. You've got to follow through on your word. You have to basically do whatever's best for the project. I think the trick about accountability is that we all kind of think that other people will hold us accountable and sure they will to a certain extent. But if you really want to like live with integrity, you're the only person that can make you follow through on your word. And so I think that's a trait that will build trust with your clients, something that has come up in lots of podcast episodes with me. And yeah, if you just hold yourself accountable and keep your word, you're going to go a lot further in this business. Man, I love that. And that's a great piggyback also after humility, because I feel like it takes humility to do that. And I have to say that personally, I think that is a big reason why I've had some success. Um, I wouldn't say major success, but I've had success <laughs> because I'm accountable and I'm always like thinking, and maybe to a fault, maybe I'm a people pleaser and stuff like that. But but that taking accountability for the work I, I do and I'm always like, that kind of make, maintains me being transparent with my clients and always keeping them in the loop and always trying to like do right by them. And uh, yeah, so I love it. I think it's super important. And I think that's how you, that's part of building trust with your clients and the artists you work with. Totally. Trust. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be your next one, uh, but uh, trust is just huge. It, it's come up in so many of my episodes. It's like you have to build trust to, to get more jobs and that's the best way to do it. Uh, what do you got for your next one? So not trust. <laughs> um, my next one is understanding basic business and money because you're not going to stick around in the music business if you don't understand business, right? You need to understand uh, how to charge people money for what you're doing to value yourself and to, you know, realize that you need more money coming in than going out <laughs> and that maybe you shouldn't invest all your money in gear or plugins, you know, simple stuff, but you have to figure out how you can actually start to earn money from this business. Otherwise you're not going to be in the business. And, uh, just to take it a little bit more personal, you know, we, we just had our second kid and like, I realize now more than ever that, okay, this is real life. This is happening. I need to support my family. And if my business isn't supporting my family, then my business is over. So I actually have to charge people money to do the work that I do in order to keep stay in business. Otherwise, there's no business. And so I'm not doing anybody any favors if I'm not charging what I need to charge. I'm super bummed that I, I didn't think about this as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love this one. The only thing I wanted to add in there is I think, yeah, everybody should be paid for their work. But you ha also have to remember that you need to be comfortable with how much you're making on a project so that you're willing to go the extra mile because if you're like frustrated that you maybe wish you were getting paid a little bit more then you're not going to do your best work and then that person's not going to call you back so it's tough when you're starting out to ask for money and ask for more money uh, or whatever it is back end but uh, it's super important to make sure that you feel like you're being compensated properly for your time and your work so that's a great point travis about making it feel worthwhile for you and Therefore, you will put 100% into the project because you putting 100% into your, your 100% into the project is is paramount for success and for everybody feeling good. And uh, yeah, you have to make it feel like it's worth your while. And even if it's free, then you have to give it your all for free. That's a great point. The I mean, if you are going to do something for free, you still need to go 100%, 150%. So my last one is that you've got to treat your art like a job and you've got to put the work in. And the uh, the war of art by Stephen Pressfield is a great book about this. Since most of us are in some kind of creative branch of the music industry, we can get in the habit of like waiting for inspiration and you just can't wait for inspiration. If you wanna be successful in this business, you've got to just start working. Every day, put the work in. Don't use waiting for inspiration as an excuse for not making progress. Uh, yeah, people that are just waiting for inspiration to hit, you know, that's just not 
that's not, not how it works in the, in the business. You know, even the Beatles, you know, they would just go in and say, we're writing a song and they would write a song, you know, and it would be amazing. I think for the most part, getting in the practice of constantly doing the work, that's how you turn out good creative stuff. And I love that book, The War of Art. It's a great book. I really dug it. And there was another book that was similar called Big Magic, which was also great. I'm into those kinds of books. They're really inspiring. Something else that I wanted to add in there is that we talk about doing the work and putting the work in. You have to make the, you have to enjoy the process of doing the work, which is super important as well, which has come up on my show plenty of times. All right. So we're down to your last one. What do you, uh, what do you have? So my last one is, I think maybe the biggest lesson I had to teach myself. And uh, this came up on countless podcast episodes and uh, whatever. (laughs) Basically, you have to be yourself and you have to lean into it. And um, no one's hiring. And you've talked about this ad nauseum also on progressions. Uh, You know, nobody's hiring, you know, Travis Ferentz to mix, you know, to be, to mix like Chad Blake. They're right. They're hiring you to mix like yourself. You're only going to do, make the best product of the thing that you know how to make best. And at a certain point, you have to lean into the things that you do best and be that 100%. And it's not going to be for everybody. It's going to be for some people. And But for those some people that it's for, it's going to be the best possible product. So yeah, you know, own, own, your, own your thing, do it, lean into it 100%. I preach that so much on the show and I agree completely. And I'm not really going to go into depth because uh, it kind of really leads me into the bonus. <laughs> so the bonus mindset that I wanted to share is one that my podcast has really been built on from the beginning and that it's, you have got to define your own success. You cannot get caught up in comparing yourself to other people's careers. You know, you can be inspired by other people, but you can't expect to walk that person's exact path. It's just not going to happen. You've got to carve your own path, which is ultimately going to be the most exciting and enjoyable part of the whole journey for you. So that is, you know, basically just what Ben said is lean in to yourself and do your thing. So if you want to check out some of the interviews where Ben and I have gotten all these insights from, there's going to be a link to my latest video over here and a link to Ben's podcast channel, Secret Sonics, over here. So thanks for watching.